So during this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to take a FrameMaker book, which is a collection of FrameMaker files, and output the content as responsive HTML5 so it can be viewed by just about any device in the world that I'm talking about, Macintosh, Windows, iPad, iPod, very cool. Also do an ebook, specifically EPUB, out of the same FrameMaker document. Wonderful single sourcing here. First, notice I'm working in a FrameMaker book file. There's a table of contents. I'll open it up. It's been formatted using standard FrameMaker tools, so you would have to be relatively well-versed on FrameMaker to do what I'm about to show you. You have to know how to make a table of contents, create the FrameMaker content, create an index, and I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to close the table of contents. I'm also going to show you there's an index in here that I've already set up. Okay, I'll close that. And there are three FrameMaker files that make up the book. I'll open up one of them. There it is. Okay, I'll get rid of it. I'm not going to save it. So I'm going to take this book and make responsive HTML5 out of it. To do that, I'll choose File, Publish, which opens up the Publish panel over on the right side of the screen. Now you'll only find this feature in FrameMaker version 12. I'm going to select Responsive HTML5, and I'm going to edit it. The Publish settings appear. I've given this layout a title of Technical Communications. Keep in mind the title is the first thing your users will see when this content opens up in the web browser. I'm not going to make any changes. Everything else you're about to see is absolute default. So I'll click Save and Close. Now I'm going to select the responsive HTML5 layout, and there's a little generate tool here. I'll click generate selected output. Well, that didn't hurt at all. I'm being asked if I'd like to view the output. Absolutely, I'll view the output. What I'm expecting here is my content's going to open up in my default web browser, which is Google Chrome, and there it is. I'm going to go ahead and maximize it. What I like about this, that FrameMaker has already leveraged my table of contents over on the left to build the responsive HTML5 table of contents. My content shows up over here on the right panel. There's a couple things I'm going to change, and I'll get to that. But before I do, I'm going to resize my browser window smaller and smaller and smaller so you guys can see how the responsive HTML5 responds to the size of my display. So imagine this is the size of my window. Look where the My Buttons went over here on the right side of the screen, which I can click and bring up the table of contents, bring up my index. You know, it's very cool. Let me continue to resize the window. Maybe this would be mimicking the size of an iPad, uh, an iPhone user. It's very cool how this content responds to the hardware that I may be using to view the content. I'm going to maximize it again. I'm going to focus now on putting a logo here instead of having your logo here. I'm going to put an actual logo in there. Change the color of this background, maybe make it white with black text, just to show you how easy it's going to be to customize the look and feel. So let me close the browser window. I'm going to right click the responsive HTML5 layout and choose Edit Settings. I'm back in that Publish Settings dialog box. On the General tab, the Layout area, I'm going to click the Edit button and see what I've got here as a theme. Now there's two themes that come with Captivate, and Adobe is promising more on the Adobe website, but I'm going to edit the one called Theme 1 Standard. For instance, I want to use my corporate logo, so I'll click in the Logo area. You can use any PNG file as your logo, but it has to be a PNG. So I'm going to browse. I do have one in my TC World data folder. Images. I've got a responsive logo already set up before I ran this demo. And that's what it's going to look like when I generate my layout. I love the fact, if you look at the bottom of the screen, Adobe has labeled what all the options are named. When it comes time to edit them, for instance, I want to edit the background. I'll just click background right here and that edits the corresponding area in the properties area. I'm going to change that color to white. 
and I'm going to change my font color. You see it says font right here. I'll click font. I'll change the color to black. I'll click save. I'll click close. Save and close. And all I have to do is regenerate. So I'll select the layout, generate. This could not be easier. Really, if you want responsive HTML5 output for just about any user, this gets it done. Let me view the output. I didn't make a lot of changes here, so it's not going to be overly, overly dramatic. But take a look. There's my logo. There's my technical communications heading with a white background. The next thing I want to concern myself with is all the numbers. I don't want Chapter 1 clear instructions to show up. Those were auto numbers in FrameMaker. I also don't want these wacky bullets here. I want standard HTML bullets. I don't want the numbers here for my headings. Also, I want the content to be split up a little bit easier because at this point, it's a very long topic and my users are going to have to scroll through. So I don't want that. I'm going to have basically FrameMaker split this content up when I get my responsive layout. I also don't want these little subheaders here. These were the little paragraphs that were in the margins of my files when this was a print book, not appropriate now with responsive HTML5. So I'm going to tell FrameMaker not to use that content when it generates. So here we go. Sounds complicated, all those things, but it's very easy. I'm going to uh, right-click my responsive HTML5 and choose Edit Settings. I'm going to select Style Mapping. Now this really is the power behind this FrameMaker to responsive HTML5 workflow. I'm going to open up Paragraphs here. I'm going to select bulleted, and I'm going to tell FrameMaker when it finds those bulleted paragraph styles to convert to an HTML list, which means use traditional bullets, not wacky checkboxes. I'm going to select heading one from my list of styles. I'm going to map it to an output called heading one with pagination, meaning make it its own content. Instead of having one big long topic, make multiple topics. And for the auto numbers, I don't want them, so to ignore the auto numbers. Heading 2, I'm going to map to Heading 1 with pagination. Ignore the numbers. Titles, I'm going to map to Heading 1. Pagination, ignore the auto numbers. Look at all these styles here. Sidehead is the one that has the text in the margins of my print pages. Like I said earlier, it's not appropriate for my online content. So I'm simply going to say exclude from output. I'll click save and close. Select the layout. Regenerate. I'll view the output in a moment. I want to see not a lot of work. Bang for the buck. Let's find out. Remember, I did a lot there with just a few clicks. I'm going to review it in just a second. I'll view the output. So here's my table of contents. The numbers are all gone. The bullets are standard bullets. I'm going to open up some of the topics here, and you'll see very clean. I've had it split up into multiple topics. The numbers are missing. It looks really awesome. I'm going to go ahead and close the browser window. So the final thing is to make an EPUB or an ebook out of my content. To do that, no problem. I'll select EPUB. I'll edit the settings. I'll visit meta information where I would fill this out with my information. Change the date to today. I'm also going to use a graphic as the cover image, so I'll select cover image. And from my images folder, I do have a graphic ready to go. It's called TechCom Cover. I'll save and close. I'm going to generate. 
you're going to end up with an EPUB out of the same content, no extra work, and this content can be opened up by any EPUB reader. Mine's going to open up in Adobe Digital Editions. Check it out. And there it is. How cool is that?